Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's what we're going to do. Worship team, go ahead and Sherry, just keep playing. I believe Steve is ready. There's a time when God opens up a place and he has a word from the Lord. And I just hear us that we're calling him up. We're calling him forth. Just begin to pray and pray in the spirit. Reach out to the one next to you and just pray over them. The wind is blowing. Come on. The blowing wind of the Lord. Shania, Steve's coming forward. Will you just pray in the spirit here? Come on. Just enter into that. Pray in the spirit. Spirit of revelation. Spirit of revelation. Lord, enlarge our capacity right now. Come on, just open up, Lord, enlarge our capacity. Come on, to receive revelation, it's about capacity. Come on, begin to ask him, Lord, enlarge me, enlarge my capacity. As you're praying in the spirit, you're saying, Lord, give me the grace to come up, 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 come up, 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 to come up, 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 to come up, to come up. To come up. Oh, Sondo. The door is standing open in heaven. Zondo, come on. Just a rabaria sondo ramaba. Yeah. Yeah, something's opening. Korama baba baka. Something's opening. Come on. Korararaba. You're praying. Yo, 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 yo. Zorianda rada de diria so rababa. Zara da de diria shondo rababa. Zondo da de diria. Zendera da de diria. Yeda da spirit of revelation. Spirit of counsel. Zara, spirit of might. Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, the reverential fear of the Lord, the reverential fear of the Lord, come on, work that, work that, work that, the reverential fear of the Lord, the beginning of knowledge, yay, and understanding, Zora baba 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 sanda rama baba baba ya Zora da de dia shondo raba baba baba ya da da de dia sondo rama ba kanda da da ya the door the door standing open in heaven the door of revelation sora da 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 ba ya sondo raba baba baba zonda raba ba ya da da ya I just saw the breath of God just blowing your path. Like where you're walking, God is just <laughs> and blowing things out of the way. And he said, this is not a wind of destruction, but a wind of construction. He's going to construct some things. He's going to build some new things. He's going to move things out of the way. It's like when you're out of breath, you need to be resuscitated. <gasps> and then God will blow. <gasps> And you're going to be resuscitated and God's going to construct new things. It's not going to be a wind of destruction. No more destruction. No more destruction. But constructing. Constructing and building and moving new things. Bringing new things and constructing new paths and new places. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to say, construction now. Come on. Construction. I saw the destruction for the construction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Care team, I haven't forgot you. We're just going to keep moving with the spirit here. Just keep playing. Let's just pray in the spirit. We're just waiting on the Lord. 
Brede bakara bari anda la la boshte. Roto koro boro la boshte. Rovo koro bari anda la la boshte. Rota kara bari anda la la boshto. Roto koro bate stere bakata. Ringa la boshte di ata la la bokata. Har boro li anda li ada bakara bari ada bakar. Shoro bokoro bari ada bakaya. Yeah, the Lord saying that the days of vain building are over. The days of vain building are over. He's building the house. He's putting the house in order. He's raising the walls. He's setting the foundations in order. He's restoring the foundations. He's doing foundation repair. Foundation repair. Foundation repair. Robotosto. Robosto. Yeah, he's putting steel framing in the walls. The wood framing of the last season will not stand, but he's putting steel framing in the wall. He's upgrading it from residential to commercial codes. He's putting steel frames, and, and he's strengthening the bulwarks of the structure. Robosto, ko rabaste de bekete, ringa rabaste, ko robosto ko robrianda la rabokoto. Yeah, the whole edifice. Yeah, he's strengthening so that it can go to the full stature and the full height and carry the full measure of the weight that he intends to carry the full measure of the glory that he intends to pour out in this hour. See, the former the former structure could not contain the glory. The former structure could not house the fullness of what he is preparing for us in this season and in the days ahead. So he is strengthening the house. He's strengthening the edifice. He's rebuilding even parts of it that have been laid waste and in ruins so that the fullness of the glory, everybody say the latter house, the glory will be greater. Come on, say it again, the latter house, the glory will be greater because he's building the house. He's building the house. He's building the house. He's the builder of the house. He's the builder. He's the maker. He's the builder and the maker. The scripture says Abraham dwelled like a, like a foreigner even when he was in the land that was promised. Come on. The things we've been striving for, we're going to find a lot of them are wood, hay, and stubble. Come on. God gave him a promise, and even when he got there, he still lived like a foreigner because his heart had been changed. His desires had been changed. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. And some sand in the desert just wasn't going to do it. But the glory of this house, the glory of this house, Roboshto Koroboto. The Lord says you don't know a show. The world doesn't know a show. The contemporary church does not know a show. They don't know a show. Just wait. Just wait and see. Just wait and see the show that I put on, says the Lord. Just wait and see. There's no smoke machine. There's no video wall. There's no graphics. There's no expert musicianship that's going to put on the show or recreate the glory that's going to be seen in this hour. Not in somewhere in the distant future, but in this hour, in this hour, the glory that the Lord has held in reserve for this hour. Oh, and the Lord says, I will make a distinction in this hour. 
When I said follow me, I did not mean on Twitter. I will make a distinction in this hour. We're not talking about a social media gospel experience. We are talking about the glory of the Lord that will fill the latter house that will eclipse what has been seen up to this point. Come on. It's time to let go. It's time to let go. It's time to let go of the measly little things that we are strangleholding on to as if that was the thing that was going to sustain us in this life. God is wanting to move you. God is wanting to move you. He's wanting to position you. He's wanting to change you. He's wanting to rearrange you. Come on. Come on. Is Esau lost his birthright? Come on. Think about that. The blessing was Esau's, but he gave it up for something that satisfied the flesh. It's time to let it go. It's time to let the things that have captured our attention in this world go. For the Lord is changing the appetites of his people. The Lord is changing the appetites of his people in real time. Come on, your appetites are supposed to change. As we mature, as we age, our appetites are supposed to change. But he is changing that which satisfies his people. He's changing that which satisfies his people in this hour. He's helping us get clean. He's helping us get clean in the spirit. He's helping us get clean in our spirits. Come on, he's helping us get clean in our spirits. The things we used to be satisfied with or the things we used to mask with, they just aren't working anymore. It's by design. It's by design. It doesn't even taste good anymore. It doesn't even taste good anymore. It's by design. He's changing our appetites because he's coming to fill the house in a brand new way. Come on, if you're looking for something deeper, you're going to be waiting. Come on, this is it. Lean in. Lean in. Lean in. Lean in. Robosto. How we may get to the, the word I wrote down and we may not. Come on. Robosto. 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 Come on. He's putting the house in order. That is priority one. He's ready to move through his people. That is priority one. He's ready to set it up so that it works the way he's always intended. And that is priority one. There is nothing else. There is nothing else. There is nothing else. Priority one is he's getting his house in order because he's getting ready to move like we've never seen before. This generation has not seen. This generation has not seen this generation has this. even those who are older ha and have touched the former glory have not seen that which has been prepared for this moment in time Robosto Harabosto come on we don't know what it's like to drink from a fire hose just yet we don't know what it's like to drink from the fire hose just yet Roboste Bakata Roshoko Robotosto Robokoto come on yeah, come on, come on. Robo 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 
Yeah, this isn't the warm-up. This is the main course. Come on. This isn't the warm-up. This is the main course. It's what he's doing. It's what he's doing. It's what he's doing. He's getting us ready. He's getting us ready. Don't settle for the less. Don't settle. Come on. Let your heart become unfurled. Let your heart become detached from the things of this world. He's getting us ready. He's getting us ready. He's getting us ready. He's getting us ready. He 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 began the no man left behind. It's his idea. It's his idea. Come on. It's his idea. It was his idea first. He wants none to be left out of this. He's almost pleading, I want none to be left out of this. But you got to let go. I, put, I gave you hands and I gave you a will. You've got to let go of the things of the world. Horrible, shoulder cool. Empty your hands and watch how I fill them. Empty your hands and watch how I fill them. Andabo show. Harabashandalarabokoto. Handalarabokoto. Roboste, roboste, andalalabo shoto, handalalabo shoto, handalalabo shoto, ho robo shekere betere de bakata, eh tabo shota la bakata. Nobody knows what the Lord gave me to speak today, and yet it's been coming out all morning. It's been coming out all morning. It just blows me away how the Lord is sovereignly moving in our midst right now. And it's all throughout his body. It's not just us. It's all throughout his body. I'm hearing it from every corner of the body, from leaders, young and old, big and small, great and obscure, those who are leaning in. There is no hierarchy in the kingdom right now. There is no hierarchy. Hear this, elders. Hear this, those who have walked many seasons. There's no hierarchy in the kingdom right now. If you're here, you, you're in. Just lean into what he's saying. Just lean in. Just lean in. Just lean in. Come on, the Holy Spirit is moving all through this room and we're not going to stop this for something less. Rosh Okoraboto Harabo Shirabakata Sharabatala de Atala Raboko Shoda Bahara by the Arabaka Shedebede Bekede by the Arabaka by the Arabaka Rombo Stokoro Brote Rabaka Brosh Tokoro Brianda Laraboko Shoda Bakora by the Arabaka by the Arabaka yeah it's the time of the rain my soul longs for you nothing else will do nothing else will do my soul longs for you my soul longs for you nothing else will do It's the time for the rain. It's the time for the rain. It's the time for the rain. It's the time of his rain. It is the time. We're not talking about something future. We're not working it up. We're not guessing. We're not hoping. The Lord is saying it is now my time. 
it is now my time to pour out rain in this nation, in this nation, in this nation. I've got this nation on my mind. I've got this nation on my mind. All of the world has this nation on their mind. All of the world is looking at this nation at this time. It's this nation, the Lord says, that I'm looking at. America, it is your time. America, it is your time for rain. America, it is your time for rain. Ask for the rain. Ask for the rain. Ask for the rain. When you know it's time for the rain, the scripture says, ask for the rain. 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 on Elijah said it the Lord said it's time for the drought to be over Elijah decree that the rain is coming decree that the rain is coming but even in that posture of decreeing and declaring the rain he still got down low he still got into a posture of intercession and he didn't come up until the rain manifested for rain it's time for rain it's time for rain it's time for the rain it's time for the rain even now we can hear the rain coming we can hear the rain coming we can hear the rain coming it's time it's time it's time it's time kingdom rain it's time kingdom rain it's time kingdom rain yes yes even for you kingdom rain it's time for the rain even for you kingdom rain it's time for the rain the lord says i've called you in this hour to prepare yourselves to prepare to prepare open containers to prepare the soil of your hearts and even now i'm coming to you with rain fresh rain kingdom rain fresh rain kingdom rain fresh rain kingdom rain even for you it's time for fresh rain Wash away 
This rain is coming to activate us. Unlike revivals and moves of the past, this rain is coming with a very different intention. And the part of the word that the Lord gave me to release today is what I believe will become a reformation movement at this time in our nation and ultimately will go throughout the earth because it is a time of activation. This rain is coming to activate. Come on. We have never seen a time where God's people are more bored with more things to do. And part of this hunger that I believe the Lord is awakening in his people is for that which is eternal over that which is temporal. Because we have been shoving Twinkies down our throat for so long and calling it the good word of God. And the Lord has been merciful, but he's coming to activate us in a way that we are not accustomed to that we haven't seen in this generation, it is a now time for God's people in every station of life. And we have a part to play, not just in being activated, but in the activation itself. So Lord, as I begin to move in now, even with this, to release this word that you've given me, Lord, I pray, like you said in Luke chapter 24, he opened their minds to understand the scripture. And Lord, the things we didn't see, you're going to help us begin to not just see, but understand, and not just understand, but see our part and our place like never before. As this rain begins to activate us in a new way. Well, since we go, we've, we've already had liftoff, we're just going to fly. The word the Lord gave me, and I'm not big into titles, but I want you to hear this right up front is heaven's solution for today. And it's within the concept of raising up champions. Sphere champions. Now before you check out and say, well, that didn't apply to me. Mm -mm. Don't go there. No, that, that window's closed for me, Steve. Oh, no, we just broke the glass. 
because this is an all hands on deck message. And so I want to encourage you, put on your seatbelt, but stay free and loose. Because we're going to all find ourselves in this story. And we're going to hear a story we're somewhat familiar with, with parts we're going to have to go back and read because we may not think they're actually in the Bible, even though I'm going to read it to you. But the familiarity of this story is not what we're going to hear today. We're going to hear it through the lens of the moment in time where heaven is getting ready to release champions in the earth the likes that haven't been seen in this generation. I need to give a brief background of how the Lord kind of dropped this in me. It's been stirring in me for about the last month and a half, and I've spoken to no one about this. Mary Beth didn't know it when she was talking about champions earlier. She asked me, she always sends me texts, would you like to give a text to let people know what you're speaking on? And, of course, I only have one answer to her. It's the same every single time. No. And that's not because I enjoy being evasive. It's because I literally usually am still not 100% clear on the direction this thing's going to go. And it's only when we come into this space that it becomes very crystal and very focused and very tunnel visioned and I begin to the Lord begins to show me how he's orchestrating and I I hear him saying it over and over throughout the service and I don't know why I still need confirmation to that level but he's just faithful to me where I need it so he's meeting us all right where we're at This particular word could be preached a number of different ways. So I'm just, I'm leaning into the grace of God for how he wants to bring it out. But he chose this day. In fact, he was showing me for the last, I don't know, two or three weeks. He kept highlighting, actually, I think it was longer than that. He kept highlighting October 27th, but we didn't have anything on the calendar for me specifically to speak. So I didn't know if he was saying something else was going to happen or if he wanted me to release this word. And, you know, it all kind of materialized just not that long ago. And that's how it goes sometime. So we're all learning to pay attention when the Holy Spirit is highlighting things to us, even if the path to it hasn't yet become clear. Even if the path isn't yet clear, if the Holy Spirit is highlighting something to you and it keeps coming up in your spirit, Pay attention. See, this word first dropped in my spirit. I was visiting with a friend of mine that we've gotten reconnected in the season. We were friends as kids. Our, our mothers both taught. Hi, Mom. Our mothers taught elementary school together. My mom doesn't even know this story because it's just happened just recently. And... Uh, I don't even know how it happened. It, it weren't like we were. It wasn't like we were family friends. For some reason, there was just a handful of times where we, I, my brother and I, ended up over at his house, staying for like a day or uh, you know little periods of time here and there. And I just remember this particular individual. He lived, um, and I'm gonna. I'm trying to say this nicely, but y'all need to feel free to read between the lines. Um, his household was one of the most secular families that I had ever been around at, at that time. You know, I was pretty young. I was probably in third or fourth grade. No God concept at all. Good people, you know, not inherently wicked. <laughs> no, but no God in their life. No religious structure of any type. And I just remember being around this friend of mine, and, uh, you know, there was a little bit of envy because I think he had every cool toy there was, all the video game systems, which in that day was like three. And they all played the same five games. And so it was a, you know, it was a, it was a real 
treat to go to his house because he had all the stuff, but uh, no God. And it was very obvious because he had like music collection that, you know, I would have been banned from my own house if I tried to bring in. Stuff that uh, I wouldn't listen to or let anybody I know listen to today. And the reason why I'm telling you this, and it seems, you know, irrelevant, and it's not, is because that was in the early 80s. And then we moved away to California, and I lost complete track of them. Of course, you know, Facebook and social media and all that didn't come around until a long, 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 long time later. And somehow we got reconnected on Facebook in the early, mid-ish 2000s, 10 eight, nine, ten, something like that. And I began seeing posts that he'd put on Facebook like, we're establishing a prayer room over in such and such part of town. And I would just think, what in the world? Did I miss a generation here? Did I miss a few decades? And I just kind of watched, you know, and uh, as he went from one Christian type of a work to another and I was kind of tracking with some of it and I didn't really reach out and at some point I did finally reach out to him I'm like man I don't know what you're doing but we need to we need to catch up I feel like I'm in my mind I'm like am I remembering the right person here because this doesn't even make sense and uh, ultimately he he, would, he was going to OR, uh, OU dropped out of OU in his second year switched to ORU much to the absolute horror of the rest of his family. Horror, just utter horror, because they had no concept. He comes from a big, big athletics family, and in the town they live in, his dad was a coach for like 30, 35 years. He's a legend in the area, and I'm sure he wanted his son to carry that on because he, he was an athlete, and, and suddenly he's going to ORU, and suddenly he's pursuing things in the ministry, and then he's pastoring a church and then he's and it just went from one crazy thing to another finally I cornered this guy and I'm like and this was just recently in the last uh, three or four months I'm like and, and we, we tried to hit or miss because he he ultimately took a church out of state lived in Texas pastor a church there and then he just recently in the last year transferred to another a church in um, New Mexico and I finally just, it was growing in me so strongly, I, I reached out to him and I said, hey, we need to connect. And I really felt the Lord in it. And so I said, I'm going to be coming through your area like in a couple weeks. Could we just get some time to get face to face? I said, man, I got to hear your story. This is crazy. The stuff I see you doing. And I know you have no history in this prior to whatever happened. And I got to find out what happened. And so, you know, we, we set up something on the schedule, and we ended up spending a couple days together. And he told me this story, and while he's telling me this story, the Lord dropped this word. And it's stuff that I've talked about in little bits and pieces here or there or used in other spaces, but the Lord just dropped this, this whole context of a word in my spirit of something that as I've chewed on it for the last month and a half, I realize he's saying, this is something you're getting ready to see a lot of. And so I sat with him in this little barbecue joint in the mountains of, and there are mountains actually, in New Mexico. And it was in the middle of something, like it's blazing, it, down in the basin in the desert, it was like 100 degrees, but it was like 55 up in this little mountain town. And it was raining and cloudy. It was like, a real mountain. And we sat there, and he began to tell me a story of how the Lord sovereignly arrested him while watching TV, I think while he was in college. And a TV preacher came on, and the Spirit of God came into his room. And he knew he was being called to make a decision with no religious history at all. And then he went on about his college business. He said, I didn't necessarily forget about the moment, but it, you know, there wasn't a root system there. And 
you know, I had a real moment. Like it was a real moment with the Lord where the Lord was coming from my heart and I knew to reject him, I was going to be eternally damned. He said, and then later, and I don't remember all the details because it was just a fire hose of information. He ends up in this little small house church with this fire-breathing Pentecostal woman who was the pastor of the church who began to mentor him and lay hands on him and prophesy over him and cast demons out of him and speak destiny into him and build an infrastructure of the kingdom in him and then handed the church over to him. And the next thing you know, he's switching to ORU, pursuing a ministry career. And when that ended, the next thing you know, he's transferring to Asbury in Kentucky and did a dual Master of Divinity in two different programs in that. And then in that process, the Lord connected him with the revival roots of the Methodist movement, and he's now an ordained minister in the global Methodist church. And the Lord is raising him up in that space and in that sphere, and he doesn't yet know it. And if you're watching this, Kindle, bigger things are yet to come. <laughs> Lord is preparing you for something you have no idea of yet. To stand on a stage you haven't even imagined. Now, why do I tell you this story? First of all, it's amazing. It's, it's like what John the Baptist said to the Pharisees. Don't say we're the seed of Abraham. He can raise the seed of, the seed of Abraham out of these rocks. God can pull it out of the rocks because of who he is. When you hear the testimony of somebody who has no religious programming at all. His parents were horrified when he became a Christian and started pursuing ministry. His whole family were in utter shock and embarrassment because they had standing in their community. It's like a Muslim becoming a Christian in one sense. And I had to ask because I knew his mom somewhat and, you know, and I just said, so, how is your family with all this? He said, well, I've baptized every one of them. Because you don't pull a firebrand out of the fire and not set the field on fire of the enemy. Come on, remember, remember when the Lord anointed Samson, he gave us a new strategy that we haven't seen yet like we're going to, but I keep hearing in my spirit the Lord said, wait till I begin to set the tails on fire and just turn them loose in the enemy's field. Because this fire is not going to burn with control. It's not going to have religious programming on it. It's not going to follow a structure. It's just going to burn. You think Russell Brand coming out of the, the deep dark is something? You just wait. Because I'm not following anybody's idea of what they think should happen in this hour. I've sought the counsel of no man. My own counsel... Come on, Yoda didn't come up with that line. The Lord said it first, my own counsel will I keep. A little Star Wars nerd trivia for some of you. My own counsel will I keep. So where does that leave us, those of us who are all in, right? I'm speaking to the group that's all in. Glad you asked. Here we go. Put on your 
Remember, Jesus said, so be careful how you hear. How you hear. We're going to eavesdrop on a conversation between the Lord and his prophet. And this prophet is a prototype. This prophet has more significance than, than we've understood or realized because he is the last of the judges and the first of the prophets. And if you haven't guessed it, I'm, of course, I'm talking about this man named Samuel who was an apostle in his own right, if you understand the function of an apostle. When you understand, what, what you, when you understand an apostolic mandate, which there wasn't the Greek language to go with that when the Hebrew scripture, but when you understand what the function is, you can go back and see it all through even the Old Testament when the Lord would call somebody out and send them in to do a work. So here is Samson, uh, Samson, here is uh, Samuel with a real apostolic authority functioning governmentally. When Samuel shows up, he is God. He showed up in the village and, and people are, you know, they drop what they're doing. They're like, what, what are you doing here? It's like a big deal. It was, we were at a meeting recently where Chuck Pierce suddenly dropped into Tulsa and even his best friends were going, what are you doing here? Like it was so unexpected. It was just this past Monday. But when Samuel showed up, it was like God showing up because whatever Samuel says, the scripture said, his words never fell to the ground. One of my mentors, the one that influenced me the most in the prophetic, she said, I always prayed this, Lord, let me be like Samuel, that I only speak your words and they never fall to the ground. It became my prayer instantly. I've prayed that over and over and over. Let me only speak your words and let none of them fall to the ground. See, I don't want my words to not fall to the ground. That's the, that's the flesh part. The first part is I only want to speak your words and let none of them fall to the ground. Now, nobody bats a thousand in that. We're all growing and training and becoming more proficient, but when your heart is set right from the get-go, it's a whole lot easier to get you to the end goal. And so Samuel is a really big deal. Samuel is God's man in the earth. He's a kingmaker. Listen, Hollywood did not come up with this term. Samuel is the original kingmaker in the earth. And Samuel authorized by heaven's decree the two kingdoms that are shaping the nation of Israel. Now, come on, we're going to find ourselves in this story individually, but we're also kingdom reign. We're going to see ourselves in this story like we've never heard it before. And so we're going to eavesdrop on a little conversation that the Lord is having with Samuel right before this event takes place because, and Samuel in his humanity, and it's just sad, I think we've all seen this too, he was an incredible man of God, but somehow that ball got dropped when it came to his own children. See, the Lord puts a lot of emphasis on family because your legacy is as much about those who will carry on after you as what you did yourself. That's a freebie. That's not even in the notes. It's not, a, it's not about condemnation to your earthly children. We all know there comes a point where you literally turn them over to the Lord, right? Yeah. If they're of age, you've turned them over to the Lord. Some of you need to hear that. You may not, have no, you may not know that you've turned them over to the Lord. And you may be hearing this for the first time. If they're of age, you've turned them over to the Lord. You're not going to fix them. And that's why Jesus said, pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. Because there's somebody that can influence them, and most likely it's not you. And it just is the way it is. But it doesn't mean the Lord of the harvest. It doesn't mean his arm is short. That's a freebie too. It's not in the notes. It doesn't mean his arm is short. It just means he doesn't need you. We'd be a whole lot more effective to try to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that. 
we'd be a whole lot more effective if we would get this thing in order and understand God actually has a plan for evangelism we've never even considered. And stri- instead of trying to coerce people to be evangelists, the Lord of the harvest will activate the evangelist. Like he's got this thing figured out in ways we haven't yet considered. See, you can be Billy Graham or you can be the man that mentored Billy Graham. Whose reward is greater? I say they are co-equals. I say they're sharing in the same reward. I believe the Lord says, I believe the scripture is full of those examples. Those that stayed with the stuff were equal to those who went to battle. Those who were behind in a support role. We're going to get to the word that none of the, this isn't preamble. It's just things the Lord wants to say because it's coming up out of my spirit. It's not Steve. These weren't thoughts in my head and I have no pre-planning on what I'm speaking right now. But the Lord is helping us get positioned so we don't miss the moment we're in because over and over, think about when Jesus is sitting outside Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wanted to gather you to myself like a mother hen gathers her chicks. But you wouldn't come, and because of that, you missed your hour of visitation. Now, think about this. This is the creator of heaven and earth who wastes no words. He says nothing haphazardly, and he himself, out of his own mouth, is saying, this could have been different. Think about that. It's not hyperbole. It's not just something to fill in dead airspace. This could literally be different. So the Lord is saying, choose. Every time the Lord says choose, it should be the most sober moment of our lives because he's saying the choice is yours, but based on what you choose, I will then act, and what you chose is what you will get. Oh, and I've seen this over and over and over and over that's, that's not, that is not exaggeration. Where the Lord is literally waiting to see how people choose. Well, God's sovereign. Oh, yeah, but in his sovereignty, he's never violated a will once. Not ever. The Bible says it's his foreknowledge that gives way to predestination. Because he foreknew, he predestined. So he knows the outcome, which means he knows how he's going to respond. So that part... Yeah, but as far as the people making the choice, never once has he violated a will. And the Lord is giving us, and we're not talking about with this group and most of the body of Christ, we're not talking about where you'll spend eternity, but we might be talking about how you'll spend eternity. To quote a good friend of mine, heaven's going to be good for everybody but it'll be better for some than others. Just like hell's going to be bad for everyone. The lake of fire is going to be bad for everyone, but it's going to be worse for some than others. There's not going to be any good, but there are levels of bad. It's a different theological discussion. And and in this life, because we're not even, this isn't even about eternity, in this life, The Lord is saying, I'm calling my people to make a choice right now to go with me in what I'm doing. And now to understand what he's doing, I think he's going to reveal some of that. So let me get through this because I really, there's such a a, a weight to this that I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak and I don't want to get ahead. So we're going to drop in on a conversation that the Lord is having with Samuel because the Lord has heard the cries of his people. Say, the Lord has heard the cries. Why is he coming to Samuel? Because he's heard the cries of desperation. Why? Because his people are in bondage. Now, the people think the solution is, I want a king. They look at Samuel's sons and they go, they're as corrupt as the other nation's kings. We don't want any of that. But make us like the other nations around us and give us a king. And this is upsetting to Samuel because he realized they're taking the lesser deal. 
Like they're not choosing the best option on the table. And ultimately the Lord has to even bring Samuel along and saying, they're rejecting me, so quit personalizing this, prophets. Quit personalizing it. But until Saul goes off the rail, he actually starts off with a bang. And the initial assignment to Saul is the assignment of heaven on what this king of Israel will be. And so we're going to drop in on this conversation, and I want you to pay attention. I want you to hear this like you've never heard it before. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 9, and it says, starting in verse 15, Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow about this time, listen to this, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you'll anoint him to be prince over my people, Israel. He, now this is important, he shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I've seen my people because their cry has come to me. What was God's purpose out of his own mouth for giving Israel a king? Deliverance from the Philistines. Think about that. Now, was there more in the mind of God? For sure. There always is, because his mind is not finite like ours. It's infinite. But at a fundamental level, the assignment on Saul's life when he's anointed king is to deliver his people from Israel. Now stick with me, because here we go. It's about to, we're going to speed up here. So the next day, everybody say the next day. And interestingly, it's the next chapter. We're going to jump to chapter 10. And we're going to read, and I'm going to go through this swiftly. We're going to read what Samuel, now we all know, and, and Lord knows I've spoke about this enough, even in this congregation, what Saul's doing. Saul's out looking for his donkeys, his father's donkeys that have gone lost, right? He's on a fool's errand. Everybody say fool's errand. But the Lord's using it, right? He's just chasing something in the natural, but the Lord is using it. Don't ever discount when you see, all right, some, something's moved. This doesn't make any sense at all, but somehow the Lord, it just amazes me how the Lord will intervene in somebody's story when it seems like they're just going nowhere. So Saul is basically chasing his tail, and suddenly he runs right into the destiny of God. And here's what happens. It says the next day, or uh, the next day, uh, when he comes to Samuel, he meets Samuel, and Samuel said, you know, he kind of gives him an introduction, and uh, uh, Saul said, you know, we brought you some money. I'm giving you kind of the, the rapid version of this. We brought money to see the seer so he can tell us, uh, you know, where our donkeys are, and then uh, a group of men direct him to Samuel, and when he meets Samuel, Samuel says, oh, no, the Lord's brought you here uh, for a different reason, and this is where we're going to pick up the story and Samuel tells him something. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because this is where we're going to find our part in the story. And Samuel begins to tell him, you're going to go to this place, and after that, you'll come to Gilbeath Elohim. And there is a garrison of Philistines. So it's at the top of a hill. Uh, another version says uh, the hill of God or uh, Gibeah of God, some of them say. And basically, it's a mountaintop. Now, here's what's interesting. On the hilltop of God, listen to this. There is a garrison of Philistines. Did you get that? At the high place, there's an army of the enemy. On God's mountain, by the way. We'll come back to that. And as soon as you come to this city, this is, this is the main part right here. You will come to a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a harp, a tambourine, a flute, and a lyre before them, prophesying. And then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Everybody say, turn into another man. Now, when these signs meet you, do what your hand finds to do, for God is with you.
And then he, and then he goes on and gives him instructions. He said, when these signs meet you, do what you're hands find to do. Then go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I'm coming to you to offer an offering and a sacrifice. Seven days you'll wait until I come and show you what you'll do. And then when Samuel turned his back to leave, God gave Saul another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. And when they came to Gibeah, behold, a group of prophets met him. Now here's Saul with his uh, helper, whoever that is. When they get to Gibeah, a group of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God rushed upon him. And he prophesied among them. And all who knew him previously saw how he prophesied with the prophets. And the people said to one another, What has come over this son of Kish, who's his father? Is Saul also among the prophets? And a man of the place answered, And who is their father? And therefore it became a proverb, Saul is among the prophets. And when he had finished prophesying, he came to the high place. Here's what's going on. Samuel gives Saul the word of what the Lord had spoken to him the day before. I'm going to give you a king. He's going to deliver my people. Now, we're going to see Saul in this because, remember, our original context is how God is raising up champions. Here's what we're seeing Saul as. We're going to take it out of the context of the nation of Israel. We are going to see Saul as a champion that God is getting ready to raise up in the earth to bring deliverance to a group of people. Can everybody see that? So here we have Saul, who is just a man, and by his own words, I'm the least in my tribe, and the tribe, my tribe's the smallest. In other words, he has the lowest opinion of himself. Interestingly enough, his opinion of himself becomes his downfall. That's a good word for all of us who struggle with self-esteem and self-image to really let the Holy Spirit do a work there because ultimately, and, and I've seen this more times than I could count, people who can't get themselves off their mind end up doing more destruction to themselves and other people without even trying than those who actually do it with purpose. It's amazing how that works. Because Saul in his worst state is building an image to himself and basically has taken over the priesthood. Like he just falls so, f he just goes off the rails. And it all came from low self-esteem and low self-image. But he starts off good, and this is our point of the story, how God raises up champions. Because we're going to see there are two parts to this equation. Everybody say two parts. There is the individual or the group that has been identified as heaven's target. The person that the Lord is getting ready to encounter. Everybody think about this with me. The person or group the Lord is getting ready to activate or to visit. He's going to bring a transformation. Somehow he's going to disrupt as they're chasing their, I'm sorry, looking for their donkeys. You got it. He's about to disrupt this because he's got another plan. But that's only one part. Here's the other one. <laughs> and as soon as you come to that city at the high place where the enemy has made his fortress you're going to meet a group of prophets. Now, these guys, there's so little we know about these other than if you find yourself. And when I, hopefully we can expand on this enough to you're going to realize, okay, this same thing's still going on today. These prophets, they're coming down from the high place, and they're doing what prophets do. They're, they're singing. They've got tambourines. They're playing flutes. They're offering up praise and worship. I imagine if we bring it into modern day, they've got flags, banners. They're not marching in rank and file. They don't look like an army. They probably do look like a group. The only order in this company is the order of heaven because this is a prophetic people who are carrying the presence of God in a way that doesn't exist in any other capacity in any other group. Now, here's what's interesting. 
What is Samuel? Samuel is a prophet himself. But Samuel sends this man to the group of prophets. Think about that. Why? Because Samuel's got a governmental prophetic anointing, and that group of prophets has got a developmental anointing. Listen, when Saul comes into Samuel's presence, he gets direction for his life. But when Saul comes into the presence of the prophetic company, he gets equipped to do the direction. See, I left out a key part. My heart was so grieved in the same time frame. It's so funny how the Lord will let you come up with the question first before you can see the answer. Now, some of us are going to leave out of here today with a hook in our jaw that will not come out because the Lord is putting it there. I was so grieved at the depravity of our society. And you got to get out of Tulsa to hear and see some of this. I mean, it's right here in Tulsa, but I'm telling you what, you could go down a rabbit hole and get lost in any segment of darkness right now in this nation and in this world. But this nation, this nation, uh, the enemy has been given such a blank check and such a clear runway for a time that uh, it's just unimaginable the things. And I was sitting here listening to this scenario where the, the justice is so corrupt, the, the system is so broken, the people are so worn out, exhausted. And just in my heart, I was like, Lord, what is the solution? And it was just a few months later that the Lord dropped this in me. Here's heaven's solution. Don't miss it. I'm going to raise up sphere champions that are going to touch every part of society. This isn't a repackaging of the seven mountains, although it can go somewhat hand in hand. It's not about taking over. It's not about dominion theology. It's about the Lord having a witness in all the earth. And it's about people that God has called to a purpose that doesn't fit in the four walls of this building we call a church. But here's what we've missed. I'll never forget when I heard this in my spirit, and it's taken me years to chew on this. I heard the Lord say, the one who wins in the end is the one who knows what to do with the meeting. I had to think about that. We got people having meetings, meetings, meeting, 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 don't have a clue what to do with the meeting. Like, like Saul in his depraved state, he thought the meeting was about them. Come see me, my monument, what I've done. But the Lord actually has a purpose within this concept. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm hovering around this in multiple ways as the Lord will lead me because we've got to see it for ourselves. There is this new assignment on the prophetic houses as well as a clarion call to those who have gotten lost in theological debate that it's time to open the doors to the Holy Spirit again because the solution to our society is in turning loose the prophetic people. Turning loose the prophetic people. There's a governance. There's an authority. Come on, Samuel was not somebody to be messed with. Just ask Agag. Oh, whoo, I guess here's Agag. Whoo, I missed, whoo, I dodged a bullet there. Oh, did you? For those of you who don't remember the story, Agag was the one that Saul was supposed to kill, but he left, he left alive along with his livestock. And Samuel's final act in that chapter was he picked up a sword and hacked him to pieces. Why? Because that was what the Lord wanted done. It was time for the Agagite lineage to end. But Samuel, he was not a pansy. 
He was a governmental force, and when he showed up, it should make everyone nervous, even those on his side. But even Samuel said, Saul, the Lord is going to change you into somebody you're not. You don't currently possess the equipment. You don't currently possess the tools. You don't currently have the, 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 the energy of heaven or the direction, and your heart is not right. But here's what we're going to do to fix that, because as everything in the kingdom, the solution is already here even before you know there's a problem. So you're going to go up this hill, and you're going to run right into this group of prophets, and they're going to be doing what prophets do, Dan. And you're just going to get a little too close to that group of prophets, and it's going to just come all over you. This is an hour for the prophetic companies to rise up like never before. The prophetic companies are rising up like never before. It is God's solution for the reformation of the ages. The reformation of society. The reformation of the church. Now, why did I start off with my friend? Do you think he's got a prophetic company in the back of his Methodist church? No, he doesn't. He's got it right here in his heart. Because he himself was playing a little too close to the slippery bank of the creek. And he got sucked in. It was the prophetic company that altered and turned his life around. I am a product of a prophetic company. You are a product of some group of people who without rhyme or reason and without order of man were submitted to the headship of the Holy Spirit who let him move and breathe and slap you when you needed slapping and bless you when you needed blessing and deliver you when you need it. And some of you, we're still trying to get you delivered. But as long as you stay here, one or the other is going to happen, and I'm betting on God winning and not you. See, Saul didn't have the ability to see what was in his heart. But the Lord's okay, I got that. Just go up this hill. Just take a walk. I'm going to do something. You never saw this coming. You've never seen this coming. The prophetic company is usually a group within a group. I'll never forget being a part. I've been a part of churches that are very small. I've been a part of churches that were tens of thousands, over 10,000, 15, 18,000 people. And while even in the bigger ones, you don't necessarily have a strong prophetic culture, the kingdom of God still works the same way. Prophets still show up from everywhere. They still find one another. The group still comes together, unformed, unmade, untested, unanointed souls would wander into the group, and their lives would be radically changed. See, it's the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, so there were other part of the ministry gifts that worked in conjunction, but nothing could minimize this particular space of transformation. We've all come encounter with the power of God. We've all experienced this to one degree or another. There was another Benjamite. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. And the Lord, even though David was from the tribe of Judah, the Lord's like, we're going to redeem Benjamin. A couple thousand years later, there was another Benjamite that came on the scene. 
worse than Saul ever could have been. Interestingly, they shared the same name. And while this Saul was trying to do everything he could to destroy the church of Jesus Christ, the Lord's like, hold my wine. Because about this time tomorrow, you're going to be on your little trip down to Damascus. And suddenly a bright light's going to appear. And you're going to be blind. You're already blind. We're just going to let it show up in the natural. And you're going to come face to face with the one you're persecuting. Now, here's what's interesting about that encounter. That Saul immediately has this transformative moment, but it's not yet his prophetic company. His transformative moment opens his eyes, but it doesn't yet equip him for the apostolic call that comes on his life. That transformative moment immediately connected the dots whereby revelation, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and revelation began working in his ministry. And it says he immediately is debating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of religious law in the synagogue and in the temple immediately. And so Paul is walking out and proving out Ultimately, his calling, but then there comes this point, and we see the same process happen again. Acts chapter 13 picks it up. It says, there was at Antioch a group of what? Prophets, teachers. And what are they doing? They're worshiping and ministering to the Lord and fasting and praying. Do you see the harp, the lyre, the tambourine? Do you see the group coming down from the hill? And the Holy Spirit says, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I've called them to. And Saul becomes Paul the apostle. Not only launched into his global missionary assignment, but also writing from a place of revelation and visitation of the Lord that becomes the blueprint for the church of Jesus Christ by at large because he's able to distill, disseminate, and integrate the Torah, the prophets, the history of Israel into the church of Jesus Christ. I believe kingdom reign is a prophetic furnace. I believe it's a prophetic birthing center. I believe the assignment on this house is to raise up champions as the Lord sovereignly moves and wills. I believe there are those of you in here today who are somewhere in the process of the Lord changing your heart and equipping you, and there are those who are hearing this now that the Lord is arresting you like Saul on the road to Damascus. You've been going one way, but the Lord is about to shift you a completely different way. I believe this call is going to go out to every church where theological debates and a ritualistic approach to Scripture have replaced the now moving of the Holy Spirit in our midst where those who are, are standing in, on the sides to be equipped and empowered and launched into destiny have been stopped and stifled. And the word of the Lord is coming and saying to leaders, you will either get in order with what I'm doing or I will move somebody else into your place because I am going to birth my people and, and deliverers in this hour. It's going to happen. I will have a deliverance in this hour. I will have those who are called to touch every part of society because my son paid for it. The blood of Christ has already paid for every one of these areas to be invaded by the kingdom of God.
There is no part that's off limits. Listen, there's no yellow tape that the Holy Spirit is not going to go behind. There is no third world or Islamic nation that the Holy Spirit is not actively working to move within. And there is no public school, the Lord says, that is off limits to me. There is no public school that's off limits to me. There's no courthouse. Not only that, even now, there are ones raging against the kingdom that are about to have their script flipped. Flipped. But they're going to need a prophetic encounter. They're going to need the company of prophets coming down from the high place, the ones that aren't even phased by the enemy. Because prophets are just doing what prophets do. They're birthing, they're changing, they're transforming because they're carrying the atmosphere of the one who put them in place. Everybody stand up with me. This is an incomplete word. It's a to be continued. There's so many different angles you can come at this. I really just felt like the only thing I could do today was just put it out. Just start the ball rolling, so to speak. Because the Lord is going to, the Lord is going to wrap it up. I mean, the Lord's going to take this where it needs to go. There's some of you right here. You've been trying to find your place in church. And the Lord's like, it's not what I've called you to. But I did bring you to a company of prophets. I did bring you to a prophetic birthing. I did bring you to a place of great influence where I'm changing your heart and I'm equipping you and I'm preparing you. And you're being transformed into another person because I've got a people who need deliverance and you're the one that's called into that place and in that space. And then there are those that God has called to be remote prophets on assignment. See, this company of prophets was mobile. The enemies hold up in a camp at the top of the hill, but these prophets are moving around. Oh, you can't come to us? We'll come to you. But the, it wasn't their idea. It wasn't like man called for them. No, this was heaven assigning them. We'll find you. Oh, you don't want to go within five miles of a church? That's okay. The Lord's already got a prophetic company in your break room at work. Come on, we're just identifying what already exists. We're not talking about something he's going to do. It already exists. It's already there. He's calling us with intentionality to begin to see it and to begin to engage it and to be it fully. This city has been a nonprofit city for far too long, and I'm saying, Tulsa, the prophetic bankruptcy is over. The prophetic drought is over. Governmental prophets are coming into this city and declaring that the drought is over. That it is Tulsa's time for visitation. And it's not going to happen apart from the government of God. Look, Samuel was as critical to the process as the company of prophets coming down. They both worked in conjunction and they both had unique and different assignments. And one didn't happen apart from the other. Lord, Tulsa is yours. Tulsa, and I'm speaking that from a birthing place. That's why I forgot all about it. It's so funny how you forget things you've already even said in the name of the Lord. The Lord showed us this was a birthing place, Mary Beth. He showed us this church has birthed other birthing houses into this city for decades now. So this church had to be the first place that this word was released. 
because it's birthing into the city still. And the Lord said there's still a chapter to be written in this. And there's still a chapter to be written in other ministries that have come out of here. Some have seen their end, but there's some that have yet fulfilled the pages that heaven has left to write. And the prophets are not going to be withheld from those places, even though they have put a, an iron curtain of non-profitness around them. The prophets are being raised up in this city, and they are not going to escape. Tulsa is not going to escape its destiny in God. The greatest time of harvest in this city and more importantly from this city is yet to happen. Tulsa is a gathering place but too long it's been the dead sea and not the live sea. This next move won't be a collection unto dying. It won't be a dead-end road where people come to get prepared and then lose their way and forget where they're going. And Lord, we even speak activation to those who have been lost in spiritual deadness, but at one time burned with a dream. They came to Tulsa. When I was in Nashville, the Lord said, the, somebody said to me, this is a city of broken dreams. And instantly I heard of my spirit. And Tulsa is the city of broken spiritual dreams because thousands upon thousands of people have come here with a dream to be equipped and to do something in the kingdom and have lost their way. And I've seen it, my, I've lived here for about almost 40 years and I've seen it from the beginning. People have lost their way, but the Lord is going to redeem that in this city. It is not going to end as the city with broken spiritual dreams because the, com the company of prophets has been raised up in the city and even now is being raised up brand new. Tulsa, God has called you to the high place. Tulsa, God has called you to the high place. He's called you to the high place. You will birth deliverers, not just in this nation, but first in this nation. This is not the missions movement that's been prophesied. There are deliverers that are going to come out of this city to this nation. For it is America's time to be delivered. And out of that deliverance will become a missions movement to the earth. And I struggled with this. When the Lord was showing me this word, I'm like, Lord, we're so late in the game. And many would say it's even too late. He didn't get that memo. I don't know why now, other than there are things coming that we are not really aware of. But the Lord is getting ready to move in power and prepare a people, not just to endure, but to stand. Listen, the Lord isn't connecting or uh, looking at and contacting his uh political weather vane to see what's going on to decide how he's going to move. He's already determined what he's going to do. Mary Beth, go ahead and come on up here. This is a good place to this is a good place to go ahead and and pray for the the care team. If you're part of the care team, go ahead and come on up here. Sorry, before the care team, Sheridan, can I get you, Sasha, can you come up here, and Mandy, can you come here, please? As before, as we were in worship, I started to see something start to form, and I saw Steve come up and put his hand on Sheridan, and I had obviously no idea what you were going to be talking about, but the Lord kept saying to wait with, with what he was showing me, and then as everything has continued to unfold. Um, Steve, can you come down here, please, as well? Um, Sheridan, first to you, the Lord says that you are going to receive an inheritance, a prophetic inheritance. And he said that you've been, been there's been this questioning, there's been this, this space, but the Lord says, daughter, I'm calling you a prophet. I'm calling you a prophet. And when your dad came up 
and you were prophesying. I don't know, I don't know who, where it was, but when your dad came up and he put his hand on you, I saw an impartation come into you. And I saw that prophetic awake in a brand new way and in a brand new space. And he says, daughter, I'm commissioning you right now as a prophet. I'm commissioning you right now as a prophet. Steve, come here. And I heard the Lord say today, um, and I think the word is confer, I confer you as a prophet, a prophet in the kingdom of God, a prophet to your peers, a prophet to your city, and a prophet to your nation. And I, as I saw the Lord start to unfold this, as he started to unfold this, I saw you, Mandy, and I saw you in that prophetic awakening, and I saw you in the place that, that the Lord has called you to, and the Lord has put you in position, and the things that the Lord shows you, and a prophetic inclination, and a pre prophetic, um, a, a prophetic, I'm going to get the word in a minute, a prophetic intuition, a prophetic intuition. And there's been places where you have not leaned into that because you have been afraid of it. And the Lord says, right now, I am releasing that fear. I am pulling that fear off of you. I am placing a spirit of prophetic on top of you. And this thing that keeps stirring within you, this thing that keeps stirring within you that you're not sure what to do with it, the Lord said it is the prophetic. And I commission you as a prophet to the kingdom of God. As a prophet to the kingdom of God. As your husband, I'm watching you start in the middle of a store, or in the middle of a restaurant. And the Lord says that I'm going to begin to Open that up even more. You will be a prophet in the high places in this city. And you will be a prophet to the men and women that are looking. I'm seeing high placed men and women. For you have been trained for this. is not something you have to stir up. It's who you are. And you've always been this. But because you're in the business world, sometimes it's hard for you to really go out there and be that. But today you're released to totally be who you are. And it's not going to have to pull up and change who you are, but it's being who you really are. So today, in the name of Jesus, we call you that. And we release you to peace, the peace that passes all understanding, and the rest to be who God created you to be. You are not to have to change, but you're to be today. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Sasha, the Lord says to you that there's this thing that's been stirring that you've you've dealt with your entire life and you see things, but you weren't, you didn't know what to do with them and you didn't know how to articulate and you didn't know how to, how to, so you journaled it. My, okay. And he said that at, there's been even times where you've like, I don't want it. Just, I don't want to see. I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to, I don't want to feel this, this stuff. And so at, in, in, in moments that it's been pressed down. But the Lord says that, that I am awakening that prophetic again in you. And I've connected you with a people that will train you in how to use it. And will train you in how to articulate. And will train you in those things. And the Lord says right now, receive this. In this iteration, in this iteration, my daughter, I commission you as a prophet. Father, and I thank you. I thank you that you're awakening this type of anointing. You're awakening this type of thing across the nation. And Father, I thank you that in the midst of it all, you still speak. In the midst of it all, you still move. And we don't have to make something happen. And we don't have to conjure something up. Father, for you just we just take steps of faith and we just take one step in front of the other. And Father, that you just lead us and you guide us. And Father, we open up our mouths and your voice comes out. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this day and hour. hear the Lord say that you've been willing to sit back and you've been willing to listen and listen and glean and listen but it's now the time I even seen you put your hand up very gently and say wait a minute you are quite able you articulate better and well more than you even think and you will not be shut down anymore because you hear and you see, and you proclaim, and you bring forth the creative assignment and plan of God. Not only in your family, not only in those who sit in a chair, but communities and the nations. Will you go to the nations with me and for me? Will you go? Will you go? Will you go? Will you go? It's an invitation. It's an invitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got to come down to the floor. It's just too high. I know it's the high place. Hallelujah. This is who you are. This is who you are. I hope you hear. And that I hear.
I can look across this room. Some of you have seen where you've been and some of you see where you are now. Claire, she's had lots of experiences of things, but one day the Lord said, activate her, set her as the head in the prayer room, work with her. She's gone on now. She's in overseeing prayer with another at city elders, and it's even more now she's being called to speak. One who sits quietly. One who has dreams and visions. But you just got to see a thing. You all see a thing. You see a thing in a people. It's not to be contained here. Where's Gail? <laughs> Sounded so bossy. Come up here, Gail. Care team, come up here. I want you to stay connected. Stand over here. Inside, deep inside, and by the Spirit. You knew who you were and who God called you to be. And hierarchy, et cetera, et cetera. So just sit down. But one day, the Lord connected you with a prophetic company who was able to see and call forth who you are. And you humbly said yes. And there's been an acceleration and a greater acceleration and a greater acceleration in your 60s than even in your 20s. And there'll be a greater acceleration in your 70s. Oh! Hear that. Don't just believe for one. Your 70s. And now... Another commissioning as pastor of a care team that the Lord said, that is who you are. You are one who cares. You have a prophetic gift of which you prophesy and you care and you move. And the Lord says, you're going to hold nothing back. You're going to move and you're going to love even more cavernlessly. And you're going to lead a people because I've placed it already in them. Spirit of God, you will not be overlooked, Sue, in this time. A love, a love, a love, a love. I hear the Lord saying, Sue, that um, there is nothing yet that will even compare to that which indeed is at hand. I don't often see things like this. I've asked the Lord twice if I'm to say, and he said, yes, your daughter is saying, go, mama, go. Go, mama, go, mama, go, mama, go. There's a generation who's crying out, mama. Go, mama, go. I'm praying, I'm seeing, I proclaimed, I'm watching. I see the breath of God in you. Don't be held back. Go, daddy, go, wherever he is. Go, daddy, go. Go, daddy, go. You're not going to sit on the sideline any longer. Go, Daddy, go. She sees, and she sees the heart of a generation. Says, my mama and my daddy, they know him. They know the Yahweh of which I experience. And I'll take the land. I'll take the land. 
And in this, you have gleaned and learned from the master to love compassionately and rightly. Why not you? Come on. Why not you? I saw earlier, I saw you and Gail holding hands, and I saw you boarding a plane. There he is, there he is, there he is, boarding a plane. And you are getting ready to do a short-term mission. And Frank, you are gonna, you were in a place of where you were loving so generously, and you came back and your eyes were full of fire, and the glory of the Lord was upon you, and you said, I didn't know I could have so much fun. You have been called to a generation. You have not been set aside. You're not coasting your way through. I've birthed again in you, man of God. I've birthed again in you. And this isn't just the Gale show. This is the Frank and Gale Goldschmidt covenant of God. You have a father's mantle. I've watched it. I've experienced it. And the Lord says, you will go. And there will be those who will say, I've experienced the father's love and truth and grace. I say, let that prophetic seer anointing open up in you. There it is, right there, right there, right there. There he is, right there. It's here, though. See, it's here, though. It's here, though. It's here. It's not here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. Yeah, to see, to see, to see, to see. Hallelujah. Seeing, seeing more now, seeing more now, seeing more now. You're going to have a new appetite for the Word of God. You're going to have a new appetite for the Word of the living God. And he just said, start with John. Just start with John. Just start with John. And I say to you, my words are going to dance off the pages, and you're going to see a prophetic unction and a prophetic revelation, and you're going to say to Gail, whoa! And Gail will smile. The love of God now. The love of God. Commissioning. Commissioning now. Commissioning. Kobatasi. Yeah. Whoa. Komata atamete sikoro hodamete eshamete e. Komata sikoro hoshebebebebete hodamete e. I am rearranging even your schedule. I'm rearranging your lifestyle. I'm rearranging even the great, most marvelous things the Lord says you have done for me and you've done for my kingdom. But I have found you quite worthy, quite worthy in this hour in order to steward a people, to love generously. This is just a trial run. It's like just the beginning. Oh, there's many more. And the Lord says, you would say, but I've already been doing it. But the Lord says, I'm calling you to do it in a whole new way. I'm calling you to do it in a new wineskin. I'm calling you to do it for my kingdom. And I say to you that you are going to begin to see the promises of God. And you're not going to begin to try to put band-aids on those because that's what you've been doing is you've known you've just, you've been doing great things, but it's been band-aids. But now, even with Amy, the Lord showed that as she has come alongside, you are growing even bolder, even more courageous, and and indeed, I see this by the Spirit. The Lord says she's even drug you out a few places, and you willingly went. But it was her willingness to go that you said, I'll go too. I'll go too. And the Lord says, I've opened up a whole sphere of, of, of revelation, but a whole places of new places that I'm taking you, and I am well pleased. Ho! Oh! Commissioned to love as a care team leader, the Kingdom Reign family. In Jesus' name. Shabbat 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 
Komata hashirebe yoromo yaraba yerede yoromoto o. Kora bete sikro hoshe bebe bete sikro hore mete e. Komata sikro hoshe bebe bete e. I earlier I saw the Lord say. This is what he said. He said the enemy has been so afraid of the fullness of who I am, fully functioning. And he thought he had you ensnared. He thought that he had you in chains. But not only were the chains broken off, and even though that there would be one that would say, you can't cross this boundary or you can't cross this border, you said, watch me, watch me, watch me. I'll create a new border. I'll create a new boundary that aligns with who I am and who God is in me. And I will go to the nations. I will go to the nations. I'll start in Broken Arrow. I'll start here. I'll start there. But I'm going to the nations and prophesy and prophesy again and prophesy again. And the Lord says, you have graciously loved and you've graciously been defined to love in this hour and in this day. But the Lord says, fully, 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 traveling, traveling now, traveling now, traveling now, suddenly, 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 suddenly will be added to your portion. And Father, I thank you for the courage of this one. And I thank you, Lord, that as one has stood up in courage, that, Father, we are the recipients. And, Father, we thank you that she is commissioned now as a care team leader over the Kingdom Reign family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is, we've launch care team leaders before and um they've all been sent out hallelujah judy wrote about the spirit of god's all over you though I've taken you to see. I now see. You're a seer. You see, but now you're going to speak, and you're going to speak with clarity, and you're not going to say, I don't know. You're not going to say, I don't have the fullness. You're going to say, I see, and this is what the Lord is showing me, and I'm releasing it to you, and receive. 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 And the Lord says there's this moment in time of which I've been taking you through so that now rightly you will love. You will rightly love, and he's calling you in the borders and the boundaries. <laughs> this is so cute. I love the Lord. And you will see and you will know when it's yes and when it's no. You're going to see and know when it's yes and when it's no. But I watched you as you took care of your husband. I watched you love him, and I watched you believe for him, and I watched you and how you would steward even those in their latter days. And I find great pleasure and great delight in you that I can entrust the most valuable gift that I have, and it is my people. My people, my people now, it's my people. Sturdy well, commissioned, commissioned. And I say to each one of you, this is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. You may see me, and I may even say, go, Mama, go for a little bit. I can still hear it. Go, Mama, go. Go, Mama, go. It's so plain right now. Glory. Gail has been our pastor of the care team and pastor with Kingdom Reign for two years. Almost exactly. It was October, wasn't it? I just realized that. And... Um, 
we've believed for others that would rise up and say yes. Beloved, many times it's got to start somewhere. It's just going to start somewhere. See, what I was going to tell you was the other ones that we called forth and were in as a care team leaders, they've been launched out. <laughs> so there's part of you go, well, all right. And the other part go, thank you, Jesus. So I want you to welcome the new care team leaders. This is Judy Nelson and Frank now. Hallelujah. And Sue Family, yes, stand up. And this is Sharon Swank and Amy Anderson. They care for you. Listen, they call you not to be nosy. It's to pray for you. They're praying for you whether indeed you're answering or not. If they text you, put a thumbs up. If there's not a thing they can do for you, put a thumbs up. Respond. Why? Because there might be one day. There may be one moment of which indeed you know the Lord is saying, call for help. And here's what you need to know. I might not be available. And indeed, they are quite able. And they know how, and Gail leads them, of how to contact if we need to go even more. But they are quite able. The Lord has found them. They've gone through training. They've done two separate different trainings. And Gail is going to meet with them as they meet with her. They're going to continue to build. They're going to continue to pray. They're going to continue to hear so they can steward what God is saying for you and for this body. And see, we have to get the containers ready. People look around and go, gosh, there's just 50 of us. Yep. But now we, have, we know what our assignment is, even greater, and containers must be ready. The Lord has said over and over again, if he can't find a container that's ready, he can't entrust you with the assignment So we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for your yes. We thank God for your willingness. We thank God for the ways you're going to reach out. And thank God that in the midst that you will be filled and filled again and filled and filled again. Amen. Amen. I know we've not done communion. I'm going to have communion. If you'll go stand at the doors as you leave, whoever's serving communion. <laughs>